Senator Kramer, the godfather of the Space Force. <laughs> Thanks, and your confession was very heartwarming. Um, <laughs> I bet it was really good for your soul. Um, anyway, that's. Uh, um, thank you, gentlemen, for being, and uh, Frank, and thank you for your candor too. I think this is really important. Um, the um, I want to start with the disruptor side of things. Uh, Secretary Calvell, you referenced non-traditional, <clears throat> you know, partners. Um, Space is so interesting because the Air Force has these wonderful prime contractors that respond to whatever they're asked of. Space seems to me to be responding to the private sector itself, the commercial side, which you know has been so active, um, and that's good. I remember one of my very first discussions with General Raymond was, "You have a white sheet of paper. Please don't. Please utilize." The, the, the freedom that that provides and, and don't adapt to the c culture that you're coming from. Um, so whether it's a, a, a disruptor in the private sector, with the, the, you talk a lot about fixed price as a, as a contributor to competition. Um, when I think of the SDA, the Space Development Agency, I always, I always think of the SDA as the disruptor within the service itself. And I'm sure that creates a lot of tensions and, and I can, recount several conversations in the last few years, particularly the early couple of years. Um, so w with the spiral development concept that you all use with, and the SDA uses, help me understand the role of SDA as the acquisition, you know, it sort of part of the shop, and then their role in, in providing, any, whether it's maintenance or management, um, participating, or are they just sort of the, do you just go to them and say, buy, we need a hundred more of these things, buy them. Um, and, and I say that, I ask that question honestly with some concern that SDA could end up getting a little bit handcuffed and not be the disruptor. We need them to be within the larger space force, Does, if that makes sense. And you could elaborate and correct me where I'm wrong. No, I think you're right. The, uh, <laughs> Thank you. The, so, so SDA has been doing a magnificent job in terms of getting capabilities to orbit. So their first spiral of what they call Tron Zero got 27 satellites on orbit, eight, eight missile warning missile tracking satellites, and, and uh, 19 uh, transport satellites. And we're demonstrating those capabilities now. Tron One will start launching, again, uh, this December will be the first set of launches for there. Again, more transport satellites, and then next spring, more tracking satellites. So from where they fit in, all things proliferated at low Earth orbit that relate to missile warning, missile tracking, as well as data transport, SDA is our go-to. That is their strength. Their strength is small sats, proliferation, low Earth orbit, hundreds of miles above the Earth. We tend to go to like Space Systems Command for the more traditional missions, such as military satellite communications at higher altitudes, higher altitudes of missile warning for launch, for space domain awareness. And then we tend to go to space RCO for things that are related to, I'll say, protect and defend kind of missions mm -hmm. that are unique that, uh, that, go, that would go directly to support okay. Space Command. But uh, overall, it's working out pretty good. Um, SDA is part of the Space Force. They're part of the family. They fit in. Even though they're a little bit disruptive, they fit in pretty nicely, actually. I think they are showing the way to the other parts of the organization that by building smaller and by using fixed price, you actually can go faster. I'm really impressed with the, them bringing in new space companies like Sierra Space and Rocket Lab and York Systems and using commercial bus lines like we see like at Airbus and at, mm -hmm. uh, and at Turan Orbital. And I think those are all really healthy things for the country. So you know, under my watch, I expect to continue to see SDA can keep doing their great work. And I think the biggest thing we'll see down the road is we need to make sure as we launch Tranche 1, which is operational systems next year, yes that people use it, yeah. right? It doesn't matter how fast we build them if no one uses them. And yeah. we need to get the services to, to ramp on and, and adopt it. Well, General, just elaborating a little bit on that, in, in, then in, is there a handoff or does SDA continue to sort of operate in that space um, after the assets are, are, are launched? And, and uh, as, as the secretary said, if no one uses them, but if no one's using them, does SDA continue sort of using them and, and helping develop develop new and spiral at, as, as they're operating what they've done already? Yes, Senator. So as Secretary Calvelli said, we have integrated uh, Space Development Agency fully into the United States. I Space understand Force. that. So they are a part of the team. Their capabilities are being detail planned into our war games, our exercises mm. uh, going forward and into our uh, war plans. 
So we are already counting on that capability and starting to test it. As like, he, like Secretary Kevlar said, we've already proved Link 16 from space. We are now taking that capability and playing it into the exercises to see how it plays, understanding how it's going to uh, support in a contested environment, and how do we continue to take advantage of it. Thank you. And I'll may, I, if there's another round, I may get into some of the budget stuff. Thank you. Senator Tobin.